Today I'm going to show you how to put a skin on a mountain banjo. This is also for people that have purchased a mountain man banjo kit. This is uh, not a kit banjo, but all the parts of it are basically the same. So you can use this to help guide you through your kit assembly. So here are the, all the parts that you're going to have. You're going to have brass screws, a bottom plate, a top plate, your skin, you're going to have some tacks and a tone ring, and this is just a coffee can ring. Basically, to make this a banjo, you have two pieces of wood, you have the skin, and a tone ring. And the two pieces of wood are like the bread of a sandwich, and they're going to sandwich the tone ring down through the top plate and pushing the skin tight and the skin will then be flush with the top plate so it's a little bit tricky to get it perfect because you have to check as you work the skin has been soaking in warm water don't soak it in like boiling hot water that can do weird things to it been soaking for about half an hour and then I pat it dry with a towel and it's ready to be tacked on and you've got about half an hour to work with it so don't wait too long so the process you need to tack the skin in from behind on the top plate and the whole time you're doing it you need to make sure that the skin is loose enough for the tone ring to go all the way through. But it also needs to be tight enough that when the tone ring is through and the back plate is on, that the skin is tight and flush with the top surface. Use wood glue around this bottom lip here, this recessed lip. And you'll see holes here. Your kit won't already have holes in it. This, I'm just replacing a damaged skin but your kit won't have any holes. Okay. Use lots of glue because I'm pretty sure the glue is does a good job holding the skin in place if it starts getting really tight or with the humidity, it's going to probably save it from breaking, breaking through the tacks. If you use just tacks alone, I think it's more likely to pull through the tack and burst. Okay, there's the glue. Now lay the, the wet skin. And I just kind of, it's hard to gauge exactly, but I just kind of start by pushing the ring in a little bit. So it's going to be loose a little bit. You're not pulling the skin tight and tacking it. You can probably actually get away with not even using a hammer to get these tacks in. I think the first two tacks are most important because you're establishing how much skin you're going to have to work with. tacks in and I check just to get an idea put it together make sure the skin isn't so tight that I'm not going to be able to sandwich the two pieces together two pieces of wood it's 
pretty tight already. So I think that would be good. So you just go around and get the rest of the tacks in there and check. I'm kind of going in a like a star pattern, like I don't want to put all the tacks in one side. Just spread it out. in. Now I'm going to uh, double check again here and then we can do some fine tuning with the skin. Get it tightened up more if it needs to be tightened up. I think that's going to be pretty good. It's pulling pretty tight. It's not too tight. So I'm just going to go around and put in a couple more tacks. Really about a tack every inch is good. Good spacing. And just being careful not to bunch the skin up too much around the edge there. That will show on the other side. Alright, I think that's enough tacks. They don't have to be placed perfectly because you're not going to see them. Alright, skin is in place. Now we need to trim the extra skin from the edge here because that will get in the way when you uh, put the bottom plate on. Uh, just carefully slice it off. Again, to show you, the skin is not tacked in tight right now. There's a lot of room there. That's to allow the tone ring to slide in. And you can see it pushes it up and flattens everything out, tightens everything up. Now here's a little tip. If uh, you look at this and I make the tone ring come pretty much flush with the top plate, but if you want to use a taller bridge or you want some kind of adjustment in your height, you can actually trim this down to whatever height you, you think it should be at and then your skin will sit lower in the pot. But be careful when doing that, not to trim too much off. Oh yeah, and uh, the tone ring has a smooth edge and then a rough edge, be sure that the smooth edge is going up against the skin and the rough edge will be against the back plate. Okay, now uh, all the parts are together, use your brass screws to secure the two pieces of wood. The mountain man kit is a little bit more simplified. Um, 
it has less screws, but works the same way. Also, I find it helps to use a long screwdriver. It's easier to really torque down the screw. Make sure your screwdriver fits nice because it'll tear up the soft brass screws if it doesn't. You are free to add more screws to your kit if you want to get some more clamping force on it. But uh, the goal is to get the two plates screwed together really tight so there's no gap right here. But if you need to leave a gap because you tacked the skin in too tight, that's okay. You can do that. But skin's still wet. But uh, it's nice and tight, and it'll dry nice and tight. Okay, the Mountain Man kit, next step, there's five holes down here, and you feed the ball end strings through the back side, they come out the front, and that's kind of like a, a built-in tailpiece for your strings. All right, I hope that helps a little bit. hope you understand how the skin works on a Mountain Man banjo kit. And if you ever have purchased a mountain kit from me or a mountain banjo from me, you now know how to change the skin.